Yeah. But I got that on my shirt. I had to ask you. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? That shit went from classy to ashy super <laughs> quick. Start like this. Would you like to start like this? Do as you do. I'm here. I have to ask. The world is your oyster. Can you be my nigga? It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Oh, you know better yet. You can be like, that's something. <laughs> on point. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> LA! Well, this is starting off amazing, by the way. Is it? <laughs> Gotta ask. You got the new EP, Are You Too? Yeah. I Good. saw the picture on the project. What is that? Is that inside your mind? Because when I see it, that's what I get. That's now you tell you me. Well, with the first one, we did like the whole uh, flowers and kind of like that was like the inspiration behind the first one. The second one is wanting to follow up with it and just kind of like, I wanted it to feel like it was a sequel. You know what I mean? So uh, I feel like flowers and, and roses, they symbolize, they're very, very beautiful objects and beautiful things. However, they do die off and it's like really, it's a, it's a bittersweet thing. You know what I mean? I feel like I, and I feel like I can't be in this music thing forever. I feel like it's just a season and you know my music may live on forever but i personally can't do this forever and i feel like it's the same thing with me with, with flowers i just love flowers and what it symbolizes you know what i mean like but eventually something so beautiful yeah try. and i feel like that's kind of like my career right now i'm enveloped into that right now and it's it, it, it could get deep it could get it really deep. deep however let me type it up and we'll get it over to you not you on my Tumblr or something. I don't even have a Tumblr. Whatever. Anyway, keep going. But I mean, that plays into your name. <laughs> it does. It does. Every life has every an ending. Every life has an ending. Yeah. And that's kind of it. See, I could go further into it, but I don't want to bore you. So. That isn't boring. Oh, though. okay. It's not well, boring. Yeah. Because you know what I wanted to ask? Mm -hmm. What do you think is more beautiful? The ending of a life and a new chapter beginning or the journey? Well, the journey is the struggle. That's the, that's the tough part. Mm -hmm. I think the ending it's a beautiful thing because it symbolizes years and years and years of just work, grind, hustle, and like the ending of that is oh, it's very beautiful to me. So, yeah. Can yeah. be, but you know what? You've always been to your own drum. Though. True. You've always been a loner. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, growing up. North Dakota being born in North Dakota. <laughs> born in North Dakota. Like who lives in North Dakota? Who? What is there. in North Dakota? Snow. Uh, buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> but you're kind of like a small town kid. Yeah, I grew up in a place called Warner Robins, Georgia. Where's that? That's in uh, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> it's about an hour and a half from Atlanta. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was kind of like nobody really knows about it. Shirt, like you just said, you know, what is that? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, small town, small kid, small mentality there, small mindset. Like people don't really try to get out of it. It's very comfortable living. Very like go to school, get a job, and just ride that thing out to the grave. <laughs> well, you know, you say that, but your your mind is so large. Like you're mm. so outside of the box. Let's try to be. And I I have to think like, how was that growing up in a town that small? gotta be the outcast yeah I mean I think um, being being an outcast and being a loner allows much uh, time for yourself and more imagination I guess you know what I mean like because yeah. I only had myself a lot of times so it, it would just be me and cartoons and you know what I mean a pin in the pad drawing you know what I mean something just something like that and that, that led to what I did now, I have to ask, because, you know, you talk to a lot of your fans, especially in your music. Your music is so connected. You tap it spiritual, almost, in a way. Yeah, I'd say so. What would you say to your fans that are dealing with that, you know, bullying, this low mm. self-esteem is really big, and especially yeah. being the outcast and being a loner? Because I remember you said it when you were four, you used to even call your parents to come eat lunch with you. Yeah, that's a real thing. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. How would you, like, talk to your fans about dealing with bullying? Because, you know, um, teen suicide is, like, so high it's right high, now. right? It's crazy. Um, I, I personally dealt with it um, by, well, I guess my parents would be a good one. I know a lot of people don't have their parents in their life, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I really can't attest or I can't relate to people that don't have 
you know. But I think the best thing to do is just if, if it gets to that point, suicide. You know, that's a it's a strong thing. You know, you have to be at a low, the lowest of low points to get to that point. And I think if, when it gets to that point, you have to seek help. You have to talk to somebody and try to figure out, you know, what this is that you're going through. You know, I, mean, I personally, I've done everything. I've been, to, I've been to therapy. I've been like, I've, I've been at those points before. And I, you know. Back in the day, I, like I said, I didn't have any friends. I had to bring my mom to you come, please. Like, no one wants to eat with me, no one wants to sit with me. You know what I mean? I've been to that point. And cre creativity, really. You know what I mean? Just finding your outlet, finding a positive outlet. Whether that's basketball, whether that's exercising, whether that's drawing, whether that's writing. Find something that keeps your mind working in a, in a, in a positive way. You know what I mean? And use that guess become better, healthier, mentally, I guess, yeah. Do you think that's kind of why you connected with like Lupe Fiasco and Pharrell? Oh, 100%. When you were growing up? Yeah, because they're, they're, so they're so outside of the box and they're so creative. Like, just look at Lupe's first album cover. Like, it's different. It's so different. But I loved it. But it was like 2007. It was like, who's doing this? Like, he was the first Amazing. like rapper I heard talk about skateboarding. Skateboarding, kick and push. I was anime like, and yeah, video games and oh man, like yeah. And then Pharrell was the same way. He was very you know into the Japanese culture and the, the clothing and skateboarding. Yeah, it's like those are that's my stuff. That's what I do. Like, and I found my safe haven, my safe place with those. Guys, you know what I mean? Listening to their music, because I remember yeah. you said you were inspired when you saw one of Pharrell's first videos. Oh, that's the reason why I do music. Really? It is. I saw the front end video, I might have been about 12. I think I was like 12. Whenever the front end video came out, and I was like, this guy's skateboarding. In the video. In the video, and he's so cool. He's wearing a polo shirt. And he's so cool. <laughs> and the girls, it was all like, over. all over him. I was like, and it was like, at that time, cool. singing wasn't cool. No. Only thing, it was, at that time, it was like Cisco, Genuine. This is like real, oh, like, yeah. you know what I mean? That type all of stuff. Cool army. Right. I never heard like anybody like Pharrell at that time. So he really shifted my whole mindset about what's cool, what's acceptable. And then he dropped an album and he's rapping on it. and. I'm like, you're doing everything. Like, NERD, you're doing rock. Like, come on, man. You're, you're out of the box. I need to be you. Please. <laughs> I told him that. You did? Yeah. I was good, just going to ask you that. Did you ever get a chance to speak to him? I definitely that? did. I was just telling them. I was like, uh, I met him in 2013. And he talked to me for about 45 minutes. Wow. I let him know that like, he changed my life. And he's the reason why I do music. And he gave me some great advice. And yeah, it's, it's a moment. Is that kind of like an out of body experience? Like I'm meeting someone who I live yeah, with. Yeah, it's one of those moments where I wish I could see again. I just want to kind of like relive it yeah. and just see how I acted because I'm pretty sure I acted weird for sure. Because that's Because okay. <laughs> Pharrell's weird. So it's like. It is. I mean, he's very. Yeah, he's like that too. So. And I'm so cool. It's so cool I can say that. Yeah. So cool I can say that. Oh, he's like that. What would you tell your younger self now if you could go back and say, hey, it's not me? Um. I would say, throw some balls. <laughs> Man up, fool. Because I let a lot of people push me around. You know, they put, like, step over me. And, um, when I look back, to, like, look back on it, I'm like, man, I could have did that. I could have did this. But at the end of the day, I am who I am. And maybe who I am. Everything that happened back then contributed to the person I am today. So. I can't be too mad because now I'm on a tour bus. You're on a tour bus <laughs> and you're living out your dreams. Living this, out dreams. You're having a whole tour life experience. I am. It's pretty fun. What is? What are some of the advantages to tour life? Um, you get to see different things, different people, to meet different people from around the world, and um, go places that you normally wouldn't go, and travel places that you normally wouldn't think to travel. I didn't want to. I never wanted to see the Grand Canyon. Like I saw it last year, last year on a tour, and I was like, "That's different, right?" Yeah, it's just like stuff that's like I don't. It's cool, but I don't really plan to see it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then you see, and you're like, "I'm glad I saw this." You know what I mean? Bucket list. Bucket list. Didn't even know it. Scratch it up. Oh, so yeah, I mean that's cool. Um, 
and for me personally, uh, meeting fans, that's really important to me, just connecting with them and just seeing, because I get a lot of people that, because of the music that I make, people connect with them on a deeper level. I tell you, just like you told for real, uh, change my life. Thank you. Are you serious? I think your music's amazing. Thank you. So how are you going to feel when other fans tell you that? They do. And it's surreal. Does it give you that thing? It gives me the moment of, like you said, for uh, me and the opposite. The out of body experience. Yeah. Because I just feel like, you know, I was you at one point when they're talking. Yeah. I was you talking to this person, talking to that person. You know what I mean? And it's, it, it, it's a big weight on my shoulders because a lot of people look up to me. A lot of people use my music as therapy and you know what I mean this is like this is a it's a weight you know what I mean it's a something that it's a responsibility you know what I mean and I don't take it lightly at all I try to try to contribute to keeping that same energy in all my music now when you say that and that responsibility you know like I know like when your flights were delayed recently and yeah. that's kind of a disadvantage to tour life definitely and then your fans may miss your show. How does that make you feel? Yeah, yesterday was kind of bad because I got a lot of people that was like, one girl was like, um, I don't care about why why you didn't show up. Sheesh. Like, she was pissed. And I was like, oh, God. And there's another dude was like, I paid $100 to go to this show. I paid for my whole family to come from New Orleans to see you. Wow. And you didn't show up. And I was like, so it's like stuff like that happens and it's stuff that you can't control, you know, and that sucks. But, but it's tour life. It's tour life, it happens. And it's like, it's not my fault. You know, if it's up to me, I'm going to do every show. I do, I've done, I did three back-to-back -back shows in London and Manchester and Birmingham just a few days ago with like a crazy fever. Like, wow. Like if it's up to me, I'm going to do it. You know but your fans I mean? don't know that. Yeah, they don't know that. You know what I mean? But it's like... They know now. <laughs> you gotta know now. Right. He, do, he does it for it's, you. Yeah, I try. I try. As much as possible. Now, you got Kalani. So that's one of your little mates. That's the mm -hmm. homie. That's the homie. Yeah. Um, how did y'all originally connect? So, I, I don't know, when I dropped the first aura, she reached out um, and told me that Situations off, the, off that project was one of her favorite songs. And I was sitting there like, cry, cry, cry. And then he played my favorite situations. I did. I, I like walked down the stairs and I was like, hey, <laughs> grandma had like upstairs. I was like, saying, it's the way. And I told her, I was like, oh, cool. Like, uh, maybe when I come to LA, we'll connect and just, you know, chop it up. Um, so I think I went to LA that next week to do a show and she was out there working and she's like, yo, come by the studio. Came by the studio and we chopped it up over there for a second. Then I hit her up, I was like, yo, I'm doing the show tomorrow, you want to come out on my set? And she was like, yeah, I'll come out, came out on my set, chopped it up there, and you know, just over time, it's just building in this, hey, I'm in town, oh cool, come through, blah, 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 like, so, just happened over time, just building a relationship, so, shout out to Kalani. Shout out to Kalani, congratulations on your BT award, too. Sweet, sexy, savage. I know, right? <laughs> I love her. Now, has she given you any advice about dealing with fame? Because fame is a different monster. There's being an artist, yeah. and then there's fame. Once right. you start to build, because Kaylani, you know, took off, yeah. and then she had to deal with the internet trolls, and they're worse than yeah. high school boys. Oh, man. Yeah, and I've I seen what that did to her, too, firsthand. Yes. You know what I mean? And, um, I'm so happy that she got through that, you know, mm -hmm. in, a, in a good, she came out of it in a positive way. Came out swinging, too. Great album and everything, you know, so that, that can go a lot of different ways for people. You never know, you know what I mean? I've seen it with a lot of different celebrities that come out Absolutely. and stuff like that and they never the same again. Never. Um, well, yeah, she's given me definitely some advice before. Um, I've called her before and asked for certain advice. And I think one of the ones that stand out is uh, a few months ago, I was asking her, why isn't things like panning out the way that I mm. want them to? You know what I mean? And, um, she, I basically told her, I was like, man, I feel like you and Bryson, like, like y'all went to college and I got left back in high school. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I think I said something like that and she laughed and she was just like, man, she was like, the one thing about your music is that it's, it's, it's something that has longevity. Mm -hmm. It's something that takes time to 
build and grow build like and a rose. Grow. Like a rose, right. So it's something that takes time, but once it gets there, it's there. You know what I mean? It, it, it takes, it's just one of those things that takes time. And once, you know, she told me when you get to the point where you need to be at, you're going to be at a point that you never know you could be. So, and, you know, I'm on that road now. I'm just, you know, swinging for the fences and doing what I got to do to so get my name out there. And, you know, I think I'm on a good, plan, uh, good path right now. So, yeah. Has your mom given you any advice? Because, you know, Mother's Day was just recently. Shout out to moms. Shout out to moms, man. <laughs> moms um, everywhere. I was in London, too. I couldn't even say, I couldn't even talk to her. Wow. But, I had to kind of like get to, you know, figure it out. But um, mom definitely no. Doesn't really give me a lot of advice. She tells me not to cuss on Twitter a lot. Though. Does she? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't say She's that. She's like, you didn't. You weren't raised that way. Stop cussing. <laughs> yes, mom. So yeah. What about growing up though? Has she ever given you any advice that stuck with you? And you oh, like of course. To um, where you are now? Be a man of your word. Mm. Told me that one day. She said, um, "If you say you're gonna do something, do it." You know, that way people can't ever say that you don't. You know, that you're not a man of your word. That's you lose respect like that. You know what I mean? A lot of people say they're gonna do something and never do it, and then you end up hating that person. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. just over something small. You know what I mean? I can name a bunch of people. I'm like, well, he never, is, he said he's gonna do something, never did it, and now I don't talk to that person no more. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm petty. You gonna be petty? <laughs> what is your sign? Virgo. Oh, hell Slash yeah. Slash Leo. I'm like uh, cuss. Y'all on the cuss with petty, but Virgos don't ever forget. You cross a Virgo, they'll <laughs> never forget. They'll, oh, I remember back in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> so describe who LA is. Oh man, I'm just a normal kid. I like to write music. I like to sing. I like to watch movies. I like to eat nachos. Do you get to eat nachos a lot on the tour bus? No. That's a disadvantage you do a lot. Could though. I do whatever I want. Can you? <laughs> Maybe. For sure. Okay. Yeah, if I need it. I want it. I get it. Okay. I'm just a normal kid. Just like I like video games. I like Japanese anime. I like paintings. I like coloring books. Do you color too? I've been coloring a long time. You should and get like yeah. some coloring books for the two of us. I need to like and some crayons. Just pass them out and people come on. Yeah, I, I would have colored. Like that. I don't. Yeah. I have a pretty dope coloring skill. Oh really? So. You go outside of the lines. I always call outside the lines. My brother used That's to tease me. That's because you, you need help. Really? If you're going outside the lines, you need help. Oh, well, this is what I used to do. I used to draw outside the lines, but make a thick line, the real, real thick, and then I would take, I would take uh, scissors, and then I would scrape it and blow it, and then it would just, it's a whole little thing. I used to trace the lines with a crown, a, uh, a colored pencil, and then just go inside. Yeah. You know, for someone who thinks outside the lines, you should be coloring the lines. I don't know if that's about that was a that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me the, your favorite song on EP. Probably Bang Your Line. Bang Your Line. Tell me why, because that's kind of Ty Dolla Sign. Yeah. yeah I think I think I like it so much because it took me so long to get it done. And I love like the I love the aspect of getting getting music and figuring out but that's like a puzzle trying to put it together how is this going to play out and it took a long time to get that done so that's why the effort and work it, I put into it I like it that much that I much? think it deserves it because of what we had to go through to get it <laughs> on the project now what do you see yourself five and ten years from now but we have to make an appointment just to get an interview with you pretty soon like I'm going to have to talk to your assistant to your assistant to your assistant who talks to their assistant to get to you well, you missed an assistant, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, uh, where do I see myself? As we said, yeah, I just want to be able to do this and be comfortable. You know, just be able to live comfortably and just continue to be music. That's grow, grow the fan base and connect with my fans. And that's all. I don't really care about the fan aspect of things. That's all. And stay on the road on tour? No. When I need to. When you need to. Yeah. Why am I Yeah, that gets tiring. Does it? Oh, of course. Yeah. You like being on a tour with a bunch of people? I don't travel with a lot of people. I travel light, so. It's my personal preference. And that's tour life. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Laura Marcel. We're gonna bring you more exclusives with this man. We watch it, like. Go get all you two download that. Let's do it. Or two out now. Squad, squad, gang, gang. <laughs> Yo, what's going on guys? LA here, rocking with Vision 4 Productions. What is your vision? Huh? <laughs>